Hi, I'm Sine Destiny. And I'm Nina Marklin. Welcome to Teen Talk on City Schools TV, where we address the most pressing issues in our lives. Teens now more than ever need and deserve a safe space to communicate our emotions and opinions on things going on in our world. Every show, we will present a new topic of discussion with teens around Baltimore City. Joining us today are three students from Baltimore City Public Schools. So thanks for coming on the show. Please introduce yourselves and what school you go to. My name is Janae Young, and I'm a senior. I go to Baltimore School for the Arts, and I'm in the stage design and production program. My name is Nadania Jones, and I attend Western High School. My name is Cameron Hay, and I go to American Thaler Vocational Technical High School. Okay, so before we get started, we just want to let the panel and our viewers know that everyone's opinion is valid and everyone's experience is different. And while disagreeing, make sure to still be respectful. This is a safe space. Keep your language appropriate. Make sure not to speak over others and give people who haven't spoken the time to say their part. And lastly, honesty and empathy is always valued. So today's topic is addressing how much our lives have changed this year during the pandemic and what lies ahead this school year. Cameron, what has changed the most for you with school? What's changed the most? Just uh, like being online, like the different environment, being at home, listening to my teachers, staying motivated has been a challenge, but I'm like getting used to um, like interacting with my teachers online. I agree for sure. How has your relationship with your teachers changed? Yeah, it's difficult. Like keeping track of what I need to do has been kind of hard. When I'm in class, it's easier for for me. Like if I have a problem, like I would just like ask, ask my question and I'll get my answer. But like everyone has a question and it's um harder to get through to my teachers right I completely understand Nadanya for you like going to public school are there anything that's different from like last spring to this school year or is it roughly about the same I was I've recently moved here so I wasn't in school that long based off of last year like online school it was really difficult um I was still getting to know my teachers and what I was doing and it was very different from where I used to be and now it's a little easier because some of the teachers that I had last year I have now and I've built a relationship with them but the only thing really is the communication between me and my teachers really. So it seems like from what everyone is saying that virtual learning in a lot of ways is much more difficult. Is it? Is, is that correct? Do you guys feel like virtual learning is much more difficult than in school learning? It's definitely difficult for me to engage the same way I do in classes. The learning style has definitely made a complete 180. Most of our work is online. And for me, I like to take notes. I'm like pretty hands-on with my learning and I kind of lose that effect being at home and being through a computer screen. I don't get to engage as much as I normally do. Since you go to an art school and Sine you as well, how are your arts classes different virtually than in class? I'm in stage design and production, so all of my work pretty much revolves around me being in the school building. So being home, we had to find new ways to do assignments. And for that, it can be kind of repetitive for me. Like now all we can do is sketch. We can't build, like it's super hard to get that material to the students so that we can still do the same things that we do because we aren't allowed to be in the school building. So it's been hard to like try to find a balance between being home, but also still getting everything that we want out of the classes that we're taking and still like practicing our talents and stuff. I completely understand. Being a musician, most of my practice was kind of at home, but being integrated within like the whole school environment with other artists and like just having the daily routine of like doing all my music classes, like definitely put me in more of a motivated mindset. Is there anything else in school, um, Cameron or Nadanya, that you guys are missing um, that you can't do virtually or that you're not able to practice virtually? Band. Mm. Do you play? I play bass clarinet, clarinet, and I am learning tenor sax. Okay. We... So talented. Yes, ma'am. I missed my, uh, like, ha- like being hands-on, like, with computers because um, uh, my trade is Cisco. I would say that it's a little hard because we can't really play, like, on, like, during school, like, online because it's, like, 20 
girls in my class and like it echoes and like it makes a weird noise so we most of our practice time is independent we do a lot of solo pieces now it's and it's based off of our strengths but we also are doing different things online where they where all of us will play our parts and they will put it together it's a little hard to do band online because I'm not with the entire band and I have to if I don't like play certain music right when they do put it together like it could throw off everything so it's more of a building your strength based off of your instrument and how well you're playing and how much you're playing um and I do I play try to play at least 45 minutes every day um so that I can work on like what I need to work on in band, but it's a little, a little hard doing it. Yeah, I completely understand. Um, community is like so important, like with music. I mean, like in school in general, community is important to stay motivated and to continue working hard. But like with music, especially in the arts, like being around the people is one of the biggest ways that you learn. So, um, on a more positive note, what have been some of the better things that come with virtual learning? Um, I guess one positive thing is that we get a shorter day. Like usually we would start school from like eight to three. And even though it's like a an hour difference, but we're starting school from like nine to three. And it kind of helps because in that morning you get yourself together, you get to eat breakfast and make sure you have like the right mindset um and it's also better because you can easily like reach out to your teachers I know Cameron was talking about it before um saying that like if you have have a question you can reach out to your teachers they're sitting at their computer and they're like quick with their responses so I guess that's a lot better well like Naya was uh saying uh like interacting with my teachers um like normally like even like with the teachers I don't talk to like it's easier for me to just like ask them for what I need and um like get a response I'm in the comfort of my own home so I feel like I get more done in the day because school is like only a segment of it so now I have free time to kind of do everything that I need to do our schedules are so much different than in school and I like that like it's smaller I'm not like wasting so much time in one space. So I feel like I have more freedom to kind of just do things that I need to get done on the daily basis. Everything's like in one place for school. So I don't have to move around throughout the school. I don't have to worry about stuff like that. I guess like the thing um, that's like really good about like virtual learning, when you go on the city school's website, if you have a question, it's literally right there. Like any, an oh, any question that you could possibly have, the answer is right there. There's no problems. And then you can just ask a teacher. I guess it's easier to access things now because like we are more tech savvy, um, especially because of our age and that we're always on technology. So it's so much easier. But I don't know. I really thought this year was going to be a way more challenging than it actually is. Nadanya, what yeah, do you think? Yeah, and a lot. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say in a lot of ways, um, a lot of things are a lot easier because you know there's not that pressure to do this do that especially being a senior you know like already I don't want to do anything um and I don't feel the need to do anything because I've been doing stuff for three straight years like back to back um and so it's difficult in a sense to stay motivated but it's easier because I have time to set aside for myself so because I have more rest time I have more time to actually do work and be really productive if that makes sense um does anybody have anything else to say about virtual learning or any more positives or negatives uh yeah I have something to say um like as like everyone was saying um like just like for me um like concentrating like on what I have to do like is I kind of like what I always like wanted in school, like uh, a place to like go and just um, like do what I have to do and get done um, like in peace, like without the noise and stuff. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, being home isn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, so thank you all. Um, we are all missing out, truthfully, on so many activities. We're missing out on so many different experiences from sports to arts, um, to just like hang out with friends every day. Um, these are all critical aspects of learning and of a student's life. And being at home during this pandemic, we haven't been able to enjoy some of the things that matter most to us. I totally agree. I really do miss sitting in the cafeteria laughing with my friends. That social interaction was amazing. Are there any things that you guys are like missing because you can't be in school? Like all safety and health problems aside, like is there anything that you're deeply missing from being in the school building? Just being around people and social interaction. It can be a little awkward because people tend to like hold back on Zoom because you can't get speaking cues. So when you participate, you don't know like when to jump in and you don't really feel as comfortable as like being in person and like just feeling the energy of other people around you. It can be kind of boring to be home by yourself or like you don't feel like you get like, you know, the best of, of the situation because you are by yourself. So it's limiting to like how you can talk to people. So I do miss like being surrounded by friends and like having um, just being around people in general. Yeah, for sure. Um, the worst thing about Zoom is like that awkward silence that happens when teachers ask you a question and everyone is just like waiting. And so there's always that one person and that person happens to be me in most of my classes that has to break it and is like, um, so actually I have and like answer it while everyone else is just and they do it on purpose. Like most people like are quiet, like on purpose because they know I'm someone's going to speak up. So sometimes that comes from a benefit because sometimes I'm not that person, but yeah. It's awkward to be that person, the one that just breaks the silence because you're like, y'all know y'all heard the teacher saying something. But I mean, sometimes I'm the I'm the one that sits in the back like, ah, uh, please don't call on me. I'm kind of <laughs> paying attention, but at the same time, I'm really not. True. Or breakout rooms too. Like they can be awkward. You have to have an icebreaker or something in there because just putting us in a room, no directions, no nothing. It it's just awkward. No one's gonna come off mute. So you know, the breakout rooms are definitely not my favorite. It's so funny, like how we've just created like a whole culture now. Like we've we've adapted really well. Now I think it's interesting to see how we're going to have to adapt now that people are having to go back. Now let's talk about safety and health. My main concern is like making sure that people are really serious about following the rules and keeping them safe, keeping others safe and like not really being selfish. The whole not wearing a mask thing, that's not, it's not a restriction for you. It's to make sure that everybody is safe and that everybody is doing what they need to do. Exactly. Um, the main question is, do you really think that people are going to follow those rules like in school, like we're all in high school, so do y'all know those group of kids that are just going to randomly take their mask off in the middle of the day and complain about having to put it on, or do you think that people are really going to take this whole thing seriously? Anyone can answer. I feel like people aren't going to take it seriously because um, certain things that teachers do ask students to do, they're not going to do it. I feel like it's going to be easier for the littler kids because they're easier to watch and they're not I wouldn't say mature but they know right from wrong and they're just easier to monitor but like high schoolers and middle schoolers I think would be a little difficult because that's where like they start now listening to teachers or they kind of do their own thing or they think oh like they can get away with it um, but I feel like if certain people like really care about like everybody else's safety, they're going to be, they're going to tell their friends like, Hey, like keep your mask on. Like they're going to try to keep everyone safe or they're going to work. They're going to work with everybody else to not for them, not to be in school. If they, if anybody really wants to be in school, then they'll do what they have to do in order to stay in school. That's true. I really hope that there are going to be those people, you know, that are going to be for the greater good, that's going to watch people and regulate people. 
because I don't know if I trust all the teachers even to enforce some of these rules. Like, um, I know that some teachers in general, they have trouble enforcing rules, like, especially as you get older. That's why I agree with what you said, because when you're younger, it's much easier to regulate. And like, they don't even have that many rules to follow because they don't do that much. Like teenagers and high schoolers, we get into a lot more stuff and we do a lot more and yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how teachers regulate. How do you feel, um, Jeanette? I think for most people our age in high school, it's like you have to see it to believe it. And as sad as that is, like, I don't want that to happen. So people just have to take the proper precautions because you shouldn't have to know someone personally for you to take the proper precautions to stop yourself from, like, putting yourself in danger or even others in danger. And I don't, there's so many things in school that could go wrong with, like, this virus and everything that I don't think that the best decision is to go back or things like that because there's just so much to worry about even limiting the number of kids it's like for my school for example if you limit the number there's still people in different departments there's people everywhere so it's no way you can ensure that every surface is clean everyone's following directions because what it's like 15 students per one person one person can't have eyes in 15 places and so I think that just to avoid that whole situation that we should stay in virtual learning as annoying as it may be for some people and as hard as that may be and then slowly try to do something. Right now I don't know what that something is because taking groups of students in really small amounts is like ineffective. Taking them in large amounts still ineffective so finding a balance between both. I don't really think they thought that far like I know I know schools are saying we have a plan we're going to make sure that the students are like socially distanced and we're going to have like the little shields around the desk but I'm in all honesty we barely had soap in the actual bathrooms so how are we going to be able to put if we didn't have the the budget for some soap and that cost not that much how are we going to have the budget to have little shields around everyone's desk that like, in all honesty, it doesn't really like add up. Um, I think they want us to say, I would think they want us to really go back and make it seem like we're going to make everything go back to normal. But I don't think anything's going back to normal in a while. Like there's normal might, this might be our new normal, having school in our rooms or cafes and things like that. Um, Cameron, what do you think? Um, well, I, I agree with you. Like, it's, it's too serious, like, of a time, like, that's going on right now. Um, I, uh, well, I, I lost my aunt, like, to COVID. And, um, it's just, uh, like, I, I mean, I, I seen, like, how it kind of, like, broke her down, like, uh, week after week. And it's just, um, it could happen to anyone. No, I just, I just wanted to say I'm so sorry. I have like family members who also um, lost their lives to COVID. And I think that that made me even more sensitive and probably the fact that, you know, my mom's a nurse. So she's like always around these people. Like the thing that she told me that was like the most like sad thing that um, is happening is that once you have COVID, no one can visit you meaning your family can't come in, no one can come in, so you have to die alone. Like, literally, like, I can't even imagine, like, going through that, like, imagining, yeah, it's really sad. But continue, Janae. Uh, I was just going to say that if we were to take steps to open schools, which I don't agree with, because one thing to think about is lunch. You, It's, like, illegal not to eat lunch during the school day. So, it's only one way to eat, take your mask off and you can't trust the kids to still be socially distanced like and also eat. And it's just already an issue for everyone to have their mask off. And another thing is we talked a lot about kids our, kids our age, you know, um, but let's talk more about like younger kids. Do any of you guys have young, younger siblings or have like nieces or nephews who are gonna be going back? Um, because uh, that's actually the people who are going to be integrating first and they have started integrating a lot of them already. I do have a younger brother who would be going back to school. Um, and we kind of had the option to opt them out, but 
we're not really sure yet. Um, I kind of, I'm a little sketchy or skeptical about him really going back because I'm like, yeah, kids have germs. Everybody has germs, but kids don't wash their hands all the time. Um, they, I, I've seen it where they'll take their mask off to sneeze and then put the mask back on. So I'm really kind of like, maybe you should just stay home because <laughs> I don't really, I don't need that. You yeah, know, you just stay exactly. home. Exactly. And that's the thing. Cause like, like they come home from school and I'm at home and then they start touching stuff and then I touch it and then I get COVID. Like, it's like, even if we don't go back, even if just someone in our family goes back, um, it's like, we're all at risk. Most of us, although we really want to go back, we don't feel safe going back at all. We're seniors, so we miss out on so much stuff. We missed out on the end of junior year, which would have been like our first prom and like all that kind of stuff. And then it, our senior year is at risk at well, as well. So I feel um, like it's kind of like a hard thing to like sit with, like that I might not have a normal high school year. However, I'm like hopeful for the future. I hope one day we can go back. And yes, things are going to be different now. Like, I can't believe I used to like go to school with people who didn't wear masks and protect themselves like now that that's the reality for me. So I don't know what the new normal looks like. Masks might be a permanent thing. Masks might be temporary for the time being until things clear up. Um, pandemics are something that's happened in history. It's kind of inevitable at this point. Um, so I think you know, just making the best out of the situation. There's still things that we can brainstorm and do to make the year as best as we can in our situation. However, it's just not going to be normal. And that's one of the unique things about, you know, senior year. We're having like an unconventional senior year, which is not ideal, but we can make the best of it. Yes, I love that optimism. We need that, truthfully. Um, because it's so easy to get like down and in like this like deep thought of like, wow. I've worked so hard just to not have a prom, <laughs> like just to not have the normal stuff and all the fun stuff that came along with being a senior. Since like ninth grade, ninth grade was kind of complicated transferring from two schools. Um, ninth grade, I really wasn't worried about my GPA or like what I wanted to do. But now that I'm in sophomore year and I recently had a birthday like I've kind of gotten into the idea that like I have to figure out like what I want to do because I I like to be prepared um like now it's like I have to do good in school and I can't let anything distract me I have to stay on the right path and I do want to venture out I do have other things I do want to do in my lifetime and I feel like like night right now, like it's just best if like I focus on like school and not so much of like anything else. At this point, I have come to the realization I'm just going to have to be uncomfortable. Life after high school, I, hopefully it's college, but I guess college and high school are basically the same thing. Everybody still has to follow the rules. We still have to make sure that we're all safe. So even if we don't go back into the school building, I guess me going to college is going to be my new going back to the high school building. It's basically, I'm still gonna have to interact with other people or still get my work done. It's still school and this time I'm gonna be paying for it. Jobs and internships. They might be a little bit different. I guess internships will still probably be virtual unless it's a, a trade type of job, but I'm not really sure. I just, it's just not going to be what we're all used to. Well, hopefully I could like still stay. Well, I, I have like, like ideas of what I want to do after high school, like um, maybe like uh, continue working um, at OpenWorks. Um, that's like a, a maker space. And I kind of miss being there because uh, I got to like talk to so many different creators and just like learning new skills, like on top of my skills that I'm learning inside of school, just like adding on to my. Uh, I think it's so easy to get lost in this moment and like stop thinking about the future because it's pretty much uncharted territory now because like we're doing college applications so different. We're the first ones to do it like this. We're the first 
like the first time we have to go to school like this. So I think it's so easy to just get lost in the moment. Like, oh my goodness, like it feels like everything is like going left. Um, so I think it's just really important to try to think about the future because it's still gonna, time is gonna go regardless if you're ready or you're going with it, you have to just be prepared. So really experience now and like take the time you need, but also think about like your future at the same time, like where will you be? Like don't stop completely because things aren't going your way. Yeah, I completely, I love that because because everything, like you said, is going to keep going. So we have to keep moving forward, not necessarily with like life as it was before, because it will never be like how it used to be, but we can still keep dreaming and hoping and like living like in our house, our houses, of course, like quarantine, like, but living as if it were just normal if that makes sense you know being precautious and everything but making sure that we're not letting this like get in our heads completely that we're stopping all the things that are important to us because that is what makes life actually feel normal is continuing to doing the things that are important to us um so unfortunately guys that is all the time we have for today and I speak for Nina and I when I say thank you guys for coming out and being here with us Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, of course. And a huge thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in. Not everyone is, always has a comfortable space to express their opinions, of course, because they don't want to be judged or looked down on. So that's basically what this show is about. Yeah, the show is a safe space to get anything off your chest and to just talk. I hope to see you guys tune in real soon. Until next time, I'm Nina Marklin. And I'm Sine Destiny. And thanks for watching Teen Talk.